Okay. That is real. That's the Morris Code of Love by the Capris. My wife uh, my wife is here. Her her call sign is B E A U T I F U L. She's put up with me for 35 years, more than 35 years. Um, she heard this while stuck on a Southern California freeway one afternoon, and it's been uh, we've been enjoying it ever since. But there it is, the Morse Code of Love on the Baby Come Home to Me album. And Ed, I think, has this in his collection on vinyl, on vinyl. All right, let's start this show for Marty. Let's see here. That's not it. That's not it. Okay, here we go. No, oops. That's the wrong slide. That's the wrong presentation. Okay, sorry about that. Let's get over to. There we go. There we go. Charlotte Amateur Radio Society. Wonderful artwork. Wonderful artwork. Is your uh, webmaster there this evening? He is. Is it Chuck? No, it's Greg. Greg, Greg is a great webmaster. Okay, we're talking about that wonderful website a little later. Wonderful. Whenever you see him, you need to uh, high five him. He has uh, that site is is wonderful to look at under Windows, under Mac, and on uh, smartphones. Uh, that takes some that takes some work. That takes some work. Okay, working amateur radio satellites with your handheld radio with low power. But before we begin, a couple of housekeeping chores, please, for those on Zoom. The restrooms for you for the Zoomers. If you go out the hallway, down the out the doorway, down the hallway, you'll find the restrooms there for you. And courtesy of AA Five UN, we have free food this evening for you Zoomers. Go down the other way, down the hallway, and find the refrigerator. And anything in there is yours for the evening. So that's courtesy of Marty. And uh, we don't want to see an expense report item for that, Marty. But thank you, thank you for thinking of us who are joining from Zoom. You might be able to tell by my background, by my Van Gogh, the Starry Night shirt. Let's try and have some fun this evening as, as we hopefully learn a couple of things. Anybody see their, their Sunport Charlotte? Yeah, this was yesterday, actually. See, ever see this yesterday? Amateur Yosalatai at Charlotte Company's premier ham club tomorrow night. It's night. You didn't see that? Huh. Okay. I thought that, that, is, your, that is your newspaper, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. Okay. We were all watching this a couple of weeks ago when this this phenomenal launch took off, and then I'm not a rocket scientist, scientist, but it looks like it looks like some engines aren't firing, <laughs> and we saw what's up. Now, of course, it's off of off of the west coast. Oh no, it's not. It's off the east coast. But now people are suing because uh, the debris fell in their yards. I mean, if I had a piece of debris fall in my yard, no, it would not be on eBay. It'd be. It'd be in my background, probably. It'd be in my background. A couple space-related items. We're just warming up here for a couple minutes. Um, this is the James Webb Telescope, and this is the brainchild of Dr. Jane Rigby, an astrophysicist, a phenomenal mind, a brilliant person. And Punta Gorda, I know her favorite joke. Would you like to hear this astrophysicist's favorite joke? Yeah. Sure. Why can't you trust atoms? Because they make up everything. Uh, <laughs> oh God! Somebody threw something at me. Somebody threw something at me. Okay, so why can we? Why can we get this gorgeous resolution? This has been colorized, but the resolution is real. Why can we get this? This is two thousand light years away. But our FBI can't do anything better than that for us, <laughs> twenty feet away. I don't know. I don't know. A couple pictures from NASA. This I just captioned. How much prouder can we be? We have a helicopter on Mars. The United States has a helicopter on Mars. That is not photoshopped. That is not photoshopped. That was a two second pass in front of the moon that a astro photographer captured. That's the ISS against the moon. All right, two years ago, we were all watching this. The Perseverance, the first image that came down, you all were watching that. Then the second image came down a couple hours later. <laughs> Three, two, one. And then just this past April 1st, a top secret finding from NASA, they found out where all, oh, no, wait, excuse me, the color pictures came down next. The color pictures came down the next day. Look at the phenomenal resolution from Mesa, Arizona. And then 
on April 1st, just a couple of weeks ago, top secret finding where all the lost socks are from the dryer. They are, they've been found. They have been found. They have been found. Perseverance turned her cameras around and looked at the earth. You see the earth there, that little dot there at the, at the end of the arrow and uh, earth from Mars. Okay. Okay. If you go to nasa.gov, folks, nasa.gov, go to photo of the day, you will come back with a screensaver uh, or wallpaper for any of your devices. Just some phenomenal, phenomenal photos. I mean, hair raising stuff. That's not me at the end of the Canadian arm, but boy, at the, what an experience. What an experience. The cupola. A couple of years ago, our cable, or excuse me, a jumper cable that fed our two meter 440 antenna on the Columbus module for a packet and for FM voice uh, broke. Uh, there it actually is. Uh, that's the replacement. They got that from HRO. And uh, there's been amateur radio aboard the ISS all along. Uh, it's not a toy for them. It is, they do take it seriously. And as you already know, most astronauts, no matter their country of origin, are indeed amateur radio operators. We just wish they'd give us some more simplex time, but uh, they're, <laughs> they're very busy. They're very busy up there. Last year, something that didn't get a lot of, a lot of air, but uh, the Russians sent a cargo mission to the ISS. It docked successfully, but then its thrusters came on while it was attached to the ISS. This turned the ISS more than a revolution and a half. It wasn't violent. No one was hurt, but definitely Cold Warish, as Russia, as Moscow and Houston are fighting each other, trying to reorient, uh, properly orient the ISS. Uh, there was the Russian module that 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 just didn't know its computers just didn't know where it was. It, it was a, a accidental malfunction. You don't need to write anything else down tonight except for this URL. My wife just put it in the chat box for you: tinyurl.com forward slash parking job. Parking job. You will hear a twenty-minute segment of audio. Dispatchers from Moscow, dispatchers from Houston. It's just, it is so Cold War-ish. For those of you in the room who are less than 50 years of age, Cold War was the relationship between Russia and us back in the 60s, back when, when, back when uh, I think Ed was just getting out of college. Uh, par so anyway, thank you, Ed. TinyWorld.com, parking job. You'll be very proud of how professional everyone stayed during what could have been something really, really horrible. This is not good. This is not good. This is like a radiator leak on your car. This is a radiator leak in the Russian module, uh, the service module, that needs to be fixed before they can uh, habitat that. Uh, so things happen. You know, things happen when you're going 17,000 miles an hour and you hit a, uh, an errant screwdriver or an errant uh, booster from another rocket or, or particles of dust. Debris, you're going to hear a lot about debris up at low Earth orbit uh, uh, between 200 and 400 miles up. Uh, this stuff is being tracked on a daily basis, everything from the size of, of a nut to a screwdriver to a handheld drill to boosters from dead satellites and dead satellites. You'll be hearing a lot about vacuuming, literally vacuuming this stuff up to get it out of the way of uh, things like the ISS, the Chinese ISS. We have a new uh, commercial space station happening in probably 2025 that SpaceX is uh, going to put up there. So, yeah, there's a lot of trash up there that, that needs to be avoided. And finally, two of my favorite photographs. This is the space shuttle Endeavor on her last mission as she approaches the International Space Station. I just there are similar photos like that, but this is just my favorite, and and uh, it's like one of those goosebump photos. And then someone unmute yourself on on Zoom or someone in the room yell out, "What is this apparatus?" Everybody know what this is? Apollo 11? Apollo 11? If someone screamed out that this is the Parkes 64-meter radio telescope in Australia, it's because that is. That gave us those wonderful grainy black and white images from Apollo 11. But look right underneath the focus cabin. Look still glinting in the sunlight, streaking from right to left, just below the, the focus cabin. That's the Space Shuttle Orbiter Atlantis. How cool is that? It gets better. It gets better. Look to the right. Look to the right. That's the International Space Station. They just undocked about three minutes. They're three minutes apart.
So this, this I've seen this photograph hundreds of times. I'm getting goosebumps. The Between the Apollo mission, we no longer have a space shuttle program in the United States. This is just a phenomenal photograph in my mind. And I need to thank John Sarkissian of Parks Observatory for letting me share that with you this evening. If your significant other says your shack's getting a little bit messy, a little bit cluttered, just let her or him know that it could be worse. This is the network room aboard the International Space Station. This is the Columbus module, the US module on the International Space Station. And the red circle is one of our Kenwood TMG 710As. But um, and you know, being having a cluttered shack is nothing new. This is an AT&T photo from 1956. So um, yeah, just let your certificate other know, you know, hey, it's all for science. It's all for science. When you work these low Earth orbiting crossband repeaters in the sky, we're going to be talking about, it is best if you work them in true full duplex mode. That's defined by being able to hear the downlink from the satellite as you key your mic. We do not have right now a currently manufactured handheld that does true full duplex well in both modes for us, two meter up, 440 down, and 440 up, two meter down. So if you want to work true full duplex, and the reason you'd want to is, first of all, you know if you're getting into the satellite or not, because you'll be able to hear yourself. And also, you'll find out if you actually stepped on someone else. So if you want to work true full duplex, use two radios. I'm in the foreground here. I have a uh, headset on. The gentleman in the white hat in the back has an FT6, excuse me, that's the Arrow crossband Yagi. That's the Elk log periodic. And he's got a, a radio there with the volume turned up about 20 feet away. So his, uh, so the downlink doesn't feed into uh, a, a can create acoustic feedback for me. Um, this is the 163rd time I've given this show. Uh, I'm international. I've done it. I've done it in Canada. So I'm, I'm an international. Well, I don't know if a star or not, but anyway, um, I, I, and I, I have a live-in groupie. How cool is that? How cool is that? As you work with these handheld portable satellites and actually uh, handheld portable uh, get-ups, uh, setups, you might be using a, uh, an antenna that's kind of forward heavy, kind of heavy, and that 12 minute, holding it for 12 minutes puts some stress on your shoulder, wrist, and arm and shoulder. We'll talk about ergonomics later. My wife, uh, I need to thank my wife for this. She bought me a Dremel tool for my birthday, and I had to start cutting up something. So here's, there's two lithium poly uh, batteries in here. Now it's got some USB jacks on it. But this is a cool little go kit. Great handle. It's insulated. Uh, it'll, it'll strap into your, your seatbelt. Um, so anyway, thank you, dear. We don't look at Playmate coolers, or, or when we go to Target, we don't see things. Just, we, we, we now both see things uh, differently than, than some of the rest of the world. Any engineers in the group? Any engineers? Three of you. Okay, cool. I'll take the red arrow. I'll take my, my uh, M squared egg beater with me to shows, and I'll put it up on a rotator, and I'll call it my souffle antenna. Just for you to know, working the FM low earth orbiting satellites, you are much more effective with a $15 tape measure beam than you are with a $302 M squared egg beater. Egg beaters are okay for general receive, but uh, generally require the added cost of preamps. You but spent $300 for that? I didn't spend $300 for that, no dear. Uh, <laughs> love you. Love you. Love you too. Okay. Here's my QSL card. We are at the Los Angeles County Fairgrounds, and we just work three countries with two watts. I didn't say counties. I didn't say cities. We worked Mexico, the U.S., and Vancouver, British Columbia. It was about a 45-degree pass of the satellite. The guy on the right is not a ham. <laughs> he is so intoxicated. He's looking for the little people in my hand that are talking to us. Uh, but this is what this is what got me intrigued, knowing that with a couple of watts, we could work some these FM crossband repeaters in the sky uh, and with equipment that most of you already own. All right, Charlotte. You've been supporting the ARRL for a while. Anybody know when you became a ARRL affiliate? The year? Dave. Dave. <laughs> oh, board member. No, board members can't answer unless no one else does. Oh, go ahead. Anybody know? It's been a while. Okay. 1976. 1976. 19, that's 23, 24. That's fi almost 50 years ago. Almost 50 years ago. Thank you so much for that. Um, 1976. God, I remember. Uh, Nelson, Rock Nelson Rockefeller was 
vice president, Gerald Ford was president, 1976. First class stamp was 13 cents. Uh, gas was 59 cents a gallon. Oh, oh. Eggs, less than a buck a dozen. Whoa. 1976. Uh, and for the webmaster, I went to your local uh, library last week, and from the archives, I found a picture of your very first club organizational meeting. And here they are. There's Doug. There's Marty. There's Leonard. There's Greg, Ed, Rick. They're all there. They're all there. I guess 76 really isn't that old, but it is almost 50. God, it is almost 50 years ago. ARRL, the American Radio Relay League. I know that 97% of your members are AWRL members, but uh, so just a show of hands, let's get some exercise. A show of hands in the room, please. Who is uh, an AWRL member already? Show of hands. Outstanding. Most of you. All right. Who is not yet an AWRL member? Show of hands. <laughs> Three of you. Three of you. Okay, that's cool. And uh, who just refuses to raise their hands at Zoom meetings? Okay. <laughs> For those who are not ARRL members, please know that they are our large, largest lobbying body for amateur radio interests regionally, locally, nationally. Personally, I'm a person who I really prefer. I prefer to know what's happening or possibly happening in the future than being told about it after it happens. And AWRL keeps on top of things for us. Your subscription gets you a, a, a choice of magazines to receive digitally or in print. Anybody using the equipment insurance plan? From the AWRL, yeah, either the personally or for the club. The club is. Yep. They have a wonderful club liability policy. I've been with State Farm for more than, f God, for 50 years. And their policy for the computers I'm using here this evening, for the mobile rig in my car, because in California, mobile rigs in the car are not automatically covered. You have to get a rider, uh, even with homeowner's insurance. But their premium is $1.60 per $100 evaluation. It's a $50 deductible per loss, but the kicker, current day replacement costs if something happens. It'll cover the repeater in the backyard. They have a commercial plan that'll cover the repeater up on the hill. Uh, go to arlinsurance.com, arlinsurance.com. It's all done online. If you need to talk to Cheryl, you can send her an email and she'll reply if you need it. You can update your uh, in, your inventory of, of gear during the year all online. Uh, very cool perk of, of the ARRL, ARRLinsurance.com. Another organization I volunteer for is AMSAT, Amateur Radio Satellites in Space. We were founded in 1969, also a nonprofit. Our mission is to build satellites and to disseminate information about them to the planet. Speaking of the planet, we are international in scope. We have more than 20 chapters worldwide and talk to your accountant or your CPA. We love contributions. We love contributions and Again, we're a 501c3. The other organization I volunteer for is ARIS, A-R-I-S-S, -S, Amateur Radio Aboard the International Space Station. ARIS not only gets us equipment aboard the ISS, but they also coordinate those wonderful interviews that students in their classrooms have with an uh, astronaut orbiting in the, in the International Space Station. We've conducted about 1,600 of those projects worldwide. So there they are. Most of you already have these bookmarked. ARRL, AMSAT, and ARIS. All are .orgs. Anybody working with Raspberry Pis? Anybody playing with Raspberry Pis? Show of hands. A couple of you. Just a couple of you. We have two Raspberry Pi 4s now on board the ISS. Uh, they're mostly accessed by European students from the European Space Agency uh, from England. Here is a middle school student's project measuring defoliation in Africa. Middle school in England is the same as it is here. Can you imagine this young woman's first job interview? Wow. Yes, I've written, I've written some computer code. It's aboard the International Space Station. Would you like to see some data on, oh God. There's Tim Peake from the European Space Agency giving some middle school students their participation certificates. Right now we have two Raspberry Pi 4s on board, one with, this, one with the Pi camera, and one, I have this one here with me, but I don't have it in that $5,000 case that was mandated by the space agencies, but uh, it's a Raspberry 4B with a sense hat. And Eris is going to have a Pi on board. It's part of their 10-part radio system that is going up there and you and i will possibly have a pi that you and i can access aboard the iss astro-pi.org astro-pi.org for a wonderful marketing t 
teaching, learning, STEM curricula, astro-pi.org. Who has gone outside and seen the ISS streak across the sky, dusk or dawn? I was at my local Best Buy store. It was 7 o'clock at night. Uh, the young man in the, fr in the front, I couldn't even speak his language, but when I, when I said International Space Station, he knew what I was talking about. And seven or eight people are trying to capture the ISS streaking across the sky. Commander Reed Weissman gave us some FM voice time a few field days ago, and some folks think that this is one of the ultimate amateur radio contacts you can make. NA-1SS, Kilo 6, Lima, Charlie, Sierra. Commander Weissman, thank you very much for what you're doing for Amateur Radio this weekend, K6LCS. There it is, folks. If it looks like me 20 pounds ago using a Yesu FT60, a non-duplex radio, with a $15 tape measure beam, working a station that was 465 miles downrange when we started talking. It's because it is. Just think of these as the ultimate line of sight experiments. Propagation, uh, atmospheric conditions, rain, sleet, snow, clouds. If it's line of sight, you're going to make it. If you have hills in, in the, between you and, and the orbit or, uh, or foliage or buildings, if you've got line of sight, you're going to make it. Why did I turn it down to two watts? Well, what is the mantra? What is our rule for amateur radio operating? Use the least amount of power necessary to make it happen. Do you have, do you have a harbor freight in Punta Gorda? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, okay, there's your tape measure beam. There's your tape measure beam and PVC pipe out in the, out in the uh, garage or in the corral. I was also fortunate, honored to orchestrate one of those ARIS contacts at historic Flaybob Airport here in Harupa Valley, California. Historic because it is chapter one of the, of the EAA, EAA. Experimental, Experimental Aircraft Association. Our city just incorporated. We, we're California's newest city. So we had the new school board there, the new city council there. Our, our 20 students were there. We talked to Commander Pettit. Um, if you know these projects, these are a year's worth of preparation for a 15-minute conversation. And if NASA knew that I was having audio problems on the day of this pro this thing worked Monday, it worked Tuesday, a Thursday morning, we had problems with audio. If NASA knew that I was in the background there flipping, a move, manipulating the pots for uh, for the kit, for the students, and for that, they would have said, no, "You guys are messing around. This is too expensive of time. Do it later." But there is. Uh, Donald Pettit talking to our, our students are here in the foreground. We got all of our questions in and we got this project on the front page color photo above the fold in California's sixth largest daily newspaper. We were just praying that Paris Hilton didn't get drunk that night and bump us off the front page. But there our kid there our kids are. All right, what did Marty want me to do? Let's see. Okay, here we go. Here, let's start the show. Working amateur radio satellites, and who am I to do this? I've only been an amateur radio operator since 1994. Um, I've worked with Promoter World Commercial, which is a wonderful experience. I've also worked at Ham Radio Outlet in Anaheim. I was sales manager for Premier slash Prime Audio. I apologize for those ADI mobile rigs that we brought into the country 20 years ago, 25 years ago, that had the poor displays and cold weather. Um, I live in Harupa Valley, California, about 45 miles east of Los Angeles. My, my wife, as I've already said, is Karen, and she's put up with this for, God, three and a half decades, dear. And we have a wonderful dog, our, our rescued lab, Freya. And you know with those ears, she'll go out in the backyard, do 1.2 every once in a while. Yes, she will. And she found, a she found a friend over the hill in Anaheim, and they do 1.2 together. And with Hamvention coming up, this is the person you try to avoid with big ears. That's, I thought that was funny. I guess not. I, I could be wrong. Let's demolish a couple of preconceptions. And you already know the answer to these. Clint, you need 100 watts. You need that expensive Yesu rotator and multiple Yagis on the roof. Do we really need all that stuff? Well, I asked Dr. Fauci if we needed all that, info, all that stuff to work these satellites. And he, and he said, absolutely not. Absolutely not. But Clint, it's an expensive proposition, isn't it? Hey, we all love Jack. Is it expensive? No, it's not.
No, it's not. Most of you already have the necessary equipment. There's the iconic ICOM W32A, a true full duplex radio. A friend of mine who is now a silent key in Texas made more than 9,000 contacts with an HT. Remember the Anley AL800 antenna? It collapsed about 12 inches. It expanded about 15 feet, putting all that stress on your, on your radio's connector. Two-meter receive... Stock ducks are okay from the ISS, but you do want some more directionality, more gain to successfully work these crossband repeaters. But uh, for slow scan TV reception, we'll talk about that later. We're hearing that with stock ducks. That 15 watts coming down from the ISS, oh, just phenomenal, just phenomenal. Knowledge is power. Sir Francis Bacon wrote this in 1597. I think Ed uh, used to lunch with this guy. Sir Francis Bacon, knowledge is power. Ed, yes, Ed, yes, is, is acknowledge that. Another quotation I've, I enjoy is, information is the resolution of uncertainty. Ooh, how heavy is that? That's heavy. That's heavy. That's heavy. All right, I'm on the West Coast. You're on the East Coast. Can anybody tell me what time it is, please? It's 5.34. That's the wrong answer. Yeah, it's uh, 8.33.58. Trivia time. Um, thank you so much. Someone is reading, is looking at the screen. It is trivia time. Charlotte, OSCAR is an acronym. What does OSCAR stand for? I don't know. Anybody? Like hearing amateur radio. Good Lord. They're good. They are good. Yes, it is not that. It is orbital. Get that image out of your head. Get that image out of your head. I dare you. Orbital satellite carrying amateur radio. And here is the United States first OSCAR one. That's redundant, isn't it? The, now, does that look like sheet metal and rivets? <laughs> it's, it's because it is. It's because it is. There's Look at the light, Dymo label maker tape on it. That's Lance Gunnar in Central California with his baby. Uh, look at that surface mount componentry. Boy, you don't need, any, uh, don't need a magnifying glass for that. Full-size resistors. And I still have my resistor color code. Um, $63. Remember that dollar amount as we talk about more current projects. Anybody hear this project? It just, it just went around a, a couple orbits around Earth emitting HI, HI, and Morse code. Is anybody going to admit that they were uh, aware in 1961? Yeah, I know. Come on. Come on, Leonard. Come on. Come on. I apologize for this, this slide. Way too many words. Just know that Oscar 1 was in 61. Oscar 2 failed. Oscar 3, our first transponder in the sky in 1965. There's been over 120 Oscars. We've always had uh, amateur radio aboard the International Space Station. And, and they do take us seriously. The low Earth orbiting satellites, we can work with low power, about 250 to 350 miles above the Earth. They will be going north to south or south to north. They'll always be hitting the poles. They always have two opportunities to have the sun hit their solar panels to energize their batteries. So the ones we're working are north to south or south to north and uh, about 300 miles up. A couple terms you're going to run into. Orbit, that's simply the path of the satellite around the Earth. Doppler. There is a Doppler accommodation you must make on these crossband repeaters. And I asked you all to bring your slide rules this evening in, in groups IO. I hope you saw that message because we're gonna we're gonna work on that equation here in a second. Let's say the satellite is transmitting right there in the middle on 435.300, 435.300. Due to Doppler, you're going to be listening for it. You're gonna be starting it, the acquisition of signal AOS at 310, 305. You can either with a VFO knob or program these frequencies into your into your handhelds. Capture it and hear it at 310. Start working at 305. Time of closest approach. It'll be right on the center frequency. And then as you lose it, if it's 23, if it's uh, 440, if you lose it, it's going to be below the center frequency. At what moment in time during these passes do you flip channels? There is no definitive moment in time. You're just going to be you're, you're going to hear yourself better, or it's going to hear you better. And so that you'll just, that's, that's how scientific this all is. Here is the, the equation for calculating Doppler. And I don't see anybody with a slide rule. Marty, Marty, I put this on groups IO yesterday to bring slide rules. 
Okay. Well, I went. I went ahead. I went ahead and did the old oh, Ed. Right. Ed. God, I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. Ed, you you are loved from three thousand miles away. I did this for you already on a good pass, a forty-five degree pass of a Leo. Look there on one forty-five on on two meters. Only a plus or minus three kilohertz deviation. No big deal. But due to Doppler. Look at the 70 centimeter. Look at the 435 signal. Plus or minus 10 kilohertz. 20 kilohertz deviation on that 440 signal. So whether you are transmitting or receiving on 70 centimeters, you must accommodate for Doppler. Uh, I'll show you the frequency charts later. If Leo is low Earth orbiting, then HEO must be an uh, acronym for... Uh, hi. Hi. Thank you very much. And geosynchronous is... Something we don't have over Central, South, and North America. There is a geosynchronous amateur satellite over Africa. Amateur radio was not its primary payload. It was a commercial bird that uh, had amateur gear on it. Uh, if you had asked AMSAT 20 years ago, will we ever have a geosynchronous satellite over uh, Central, South, and North America? You know, absolutely not. No, it's way too expensive. And it is horribly expensive. It's, it needs to be a maneuverable satellite so we don't bump into your uh, Super Bowl coverage in February. It's It's expensive real estate up there this is not an official proclamation or anything but now we have a spacex board member who's an amateur radio operator we have spacex putting up a commercial space station possibly in 2025 is spacex possibly the piggyback opportunity for us if we just build it they will launch it not sure not sure it's more of a possibility now than ever before so uh, watch watch your news and put amsat you can put amsat in your will do you know that? You can bequeath money to AMSAT. Who's going to be irritated? The grandkids. You'll be gone. Who cares? Okay. Uh, we already talked about that. Uplink and downlink. Uplink is your transmitted signal to the satellite. Downlink is from it. And footprint is a circular or oval pattern on Earth where you should be line of sight to the satellite. And the programs we'll talk about for satellite pass prediction are really, really conservative. You usually conservative with that footprint. Hey, there's a footprint right there. Some of you are, are leaning back, you know, first of all, you know, why do we get this guy here with this shirt on and this background talking to us about a 12 minute pass? This should be a no one's 911 plan because these are not state. These are not manned by operators. This is not anything for a, a regional emergency. Why? Why even talk about these things? You've got your 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 well established sun, sunshine net. Your 440 machine is back up. You've got a six meter net. Is a six meter net still up and alive? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's that, that's a technical. That's a that's that's a fun net. Uh, so why do this? There's no one in that room that doesn't wear more than one hat in this f phenomenal hobby we call amateur radio. And this is just something else we can do with a handheld radio, a fifteen dollar tape measure beam. Uh, it's technician stuff. It's two meters and seventy. It's it's two meter four forty. We can all do it. There's nothing more exciting for me. We're, we're opening up back here in California again uh, for me to go to a regional park, take my tape measure beam out, sit at a park bench and start working a terrestrial station or, or a satellite. You get families coming over. You learn what the kids are learning about in math in school. And, and is there a ham club there? No, there isn't. Well, at lunchtime, go look at the teacher's parking lot. Whoever's got the strange antennas. There's your mentor. There's your mentor. You'll always, of course, carry the Charlotte Amateur Radio Society uh, membership form in your pocket. But it's just another thing we can do in this in this wonderful amateur radio hobby. Hobby. Let's flip forward from 1961 to 2004 when we launched AO51. AO51 cost a little bit more, 110 grand, but this was the most phenomenal amateur radio satellite marketing tool, learning tool, teaching tool that we have had for amateur radio satellites. It was so universally available uh, to all audiences. There's the CubeSat. There we are in the front center right front center just to the left there are three cubesats on this payload but we're the only we're the only amateur gear on this payload launched in 2004 you already know it's sun synchronous we would turn it on to, uh, to 1.2 gig uplink for those who had that icom or linko handheld uh, would do that once a month just a phenomenal teaching tool uh it's, it has passed away uh but and we've been trying to duplicate the wonderfulness of AO51. One thing as you cruise the web for information about satellites, please. Uh, 15 years ago, I cruised the web. I used the, the search term 
easy to work amateur radio satellites or easy satellites. And you can do that today. I had a scoutmaster call me a couple of years ago. He was really irritated with me. He had a, an assemblage of 350 people. He could not work AO51. Yeah, AO51 passed away nine years ago. It lasted longer than it was supposed to, but it's been gone for a while. But if you search for easy to work satellites, you're going to get 30 years worth of easy to work satellites. So please, as you cruise the web, make sure whatever you're looking at, that the webmasters respect you enough that they date everything you're looking at. So AMSAT, my site was last updated 45 minutes ago. Eris, uh, AMSAT hyphen UK, a wonderful site in, uh, in, the, in the United Kingdom. Make sure what you're looking at is, you know, so antenna theory and, and stuff hasn't changed, but what satellites are available for you has indeed changed. I beat that to death, sun synchronous. You'll get to a point, though, in your satellite career where you will not take your iPhone, your, your I can't, oh, the iPad, printouts, notebook with you outside. You will just know north to south or south to north. And whether it's going to be towards your east or towards your west, uh, you, you'll get that familiar with the satellites. When your wife goes on her first trip to Tibet for six weeks, uh, you go to some other satellite controllers' sites and download their telemetry software and, and listen to telemetry birds. Now, I, this, is, if this is too geeky, I apologize, but there's solar panel conditions, battery conditions. Uh, so on this side of the earth, you download this data and then upload it to their servers so they can see how the, if they're commands they gave the satellite over there have taken or not. But again, be careful. This should only be done when your significant other is, is not in your zip code. The, us, the Saudis have a bird up in the sky. A show of hands, please. A show of hands. How many have had a handheld battery last 20 years? <laughs> Nobody? No. Nope. This satellite was launched 20 years ago, and it's still working. It's not lithium. It's a Nikad chemistry. It's kind of cold in space. This thing is still, it, it's a little off frequency. It's a, you have to use your full four watts and a good antenna to get into it, but it's still working 20 years later. SO50, have that one programmed. And I have a surprise about SO50 later for you. AO27, AMSAT Oscar 27 died about 10 years ago. About five years ago, it came back. We have no idea why. We have no idea why. I mean, cold solder joints don't repair themselves in space. So, and right now it's not on again, but truck wire, the control operator is on your coast, it's on the East Coast, and uh, might be sending signals to it to try and get it to resurrect. So, program AO27. More recently, AMSAT has launched AO91 and 92. <sighs> I'm not going to use the F word, I'm not going to use the failure word, but these have not. A lot of learning occurred, a lot of education, but these are not operating like we wanted them to. Please do not even attempt to Oscar, attempt to work Oscar 92. It's uh, not even on right now. When it does come on, it might just be telemetry at a few hundred milliwatts. 92, don't work it. AO 91 is up and available for you, but please only try to work 91 when it's being hit by the sun, only when the sun is hitting it. Uh, so if you're getting sunburned, that, that, you'd, you'd be safe. But that's how dire the, the battery situation is. Please do not try 91 at night. It'll be tempting. Oh, God, it'll be tempting in the middle of the night, but 91 only when the sun is hitting it. Minimum requirements for working these. Um, the current crop, or even some older Yesu handhelds, allow you to program split frequencies, two meter up, 440 down, or just the opposite in one memory location, FT60. Any FT60 owners in the room? Any FT70 owners in the room? What's your handheld of choice in Punta Gorda? Are you, do, are you doing D-Star? What, what are you doing in Punta Gorda with, with handhelds? Balfang. Balfang. What did they say? Balfang? What is that? What is that? What is that? Yeah. Okay. None, none of those will do it, but two of them. Use your better rig for the receiver and transmit on the, on the well-received or well-reviewed uh, import. Uh, improve your antenna, we'll talk about, and we'll talk about tracking software. I saw a couple of hands in the Zoom room, the FT60. If you're getting into the, into the hobby, uh, there is no better 2 meter 440 FM voice HT than the ASU FT60, period. Doesn't do digital, 
but it has a thousand memories. It receives 108 to a gig. It receives AM aircraft properly for 108 to 130 for you. Easy to manually program. The strongest belt clip of any amateur radio on the market and its battery situation. Its battery situation. You get the little FBA 25 battery tray for it, populate it with alkalins or nickel metal hydride. You have full transmit power available to you if you really need it. That's what sets the FT-60 apart. It's an old rig introduced in Dayton in 2004. There's no better feature set in an amateur radio 2440 HT out there. Your FT-70, I don't think there's a double A case for the FT-70. Uh, the THF-6A, the tri-bander from Kenwood, you put the little double A case on it, you've got 350 milliwatts for 10 minutes. This is a unique radio. Search, search and radio, uh, search and rescue folks and uh, amateur radio people out in the fields love this this radio. So if you're getting into the hobby, but check with your Punta Gorda fellow members, see if there's anything digital you want to be doing in this in the in the region. But for a solid two meter four forty machine, and when you program a Yesu for split frequencies like we discussed, both the plus and the minus sign will appear in the display. Improve your stock duck. We all know the stock ducks that come with handhelds are negative 9, negative 10, negative 11 dB or worse. The Diamond SRH320A is a wonderful antenna, but it's always 15 inches long and it's $50. A better performer at half the cost, hams love, love bargains, don't they, is the Smiley 270. It's a collapsible metal rod. But look at that coil in the middle there. It outperforms the uh, Diamond SRH 320. Will collapse to five inches for you for stock duck performance. But you pull it out, and it's a full quarter wave two meter antenna. Here's the kind of a mistake you can make with the uh, Smiley. Um, I'm going into this because while working for Ham Radio Outlet, I had a, a bunch of hams to accidentally drop radios and, and damage their SMA connectors. And quality SMA connectors are only rated at three to 500 connect disconnects. And if you're using a Chinese import radio, that is not a quality SMA connector. So think about getting a converter, a little adapter, SMA to BNC. If you're going to be changing out antennas a lot, I'd rather see you wear out a $15 adapter than have to dispose of a radio or pay $50 for Yesu to, to repair it for you. Um, except this adapter on the left, the Yesu CN3, I think it should be outlawed. Oh, really? Why is that? Why is that? Imagine putting heavy coax or heavy antenna on either of these two connectors. The CN3 adapter over there on the left, any stress on that adapter is yanking metal to metal contact against your circuit board. It's going to fail that antenna connector. It's going to fail during your net, during your emergency, during your project. Compare that to something like the one on the right. It's got a rubbery cushion, a shock absorber. A shock absorber allo allows you to make mistakes. Uh, it just makes sense. A shock absorber absorbs shocks. I've seen this worse in the field, and you engineers have seen this too. I've seen PL and N down to SMA. Is that scary? All right. It's the point. I think I've made. I think I've overdone this. I've overdone this. Uh, you've you've probably already had dinner. I haven't. If you have a pacemaker or if you are weak of heart, the following is not suited for minors. Viewer discretion is advised. Again, if you are weak of heart or have a pacemaker, please turn away for the next slide. <laughs> oh man! I one two three. I think there's there's a TV there's a F connector in there. Someone went to Radio Shack, bought one of everything. Okay, field day's coming up. Don't you dare do this to your radio. Don't let a reporter say, "Oh, that's why they call it amateur radio." Don't do this. Don't do this. Even if they were even if they were connected, a third of a dB loss each. Uh, yeah, no, no. Don't do this. Don't do this. Ham radio outlet or your uh, ham fests have jumpers. Do something, please, to protect your delicate SMA connector. Okay, I beat that to death. That was 20 minutes. Um, and there's the two little diamond adapters. There's a lot of difference between how antennas mate to the top of HTs. So ask a fellow uh, owner of your brand or ask HRO, hamradio.com, hamradio.com, uh, which one fits best. When your wife goes on her second trip to Tibet for six weeks, you whip out your Motorola signal generating equipment and you start testing HT antennas. This is a waste of time. This is a waste of time. As we all learned in adolescence, 
longer is better. And for us, 15 to 17 inches is what you want either here in UHF or here in VHF. Don't, if you get, you have three new hams in the, in the meeting this evening. Gentlemen, if you want to test HC antennas, please put that energy towards no, another project for the club. This is, it sounds like it's exciting. It's not, it's a, it's, there's antenna theory hasn't changed in the last what, 50 years, 60 years. Yeah. Yeah. Double your play. Oh, I remember this ad campaign. Okay, Marty, I'm not gonna charge you anymore for this, Marty, but here's a tip for you. Who would like to double the life of their HT battery? Anybody? You're all satisfied with your HD light? You would? Okay. I think you know what I'm going to say. Improve your antenna to that, to that diamond or that smiley and turn your transmit power down to 2 watts. If you're not making it 2 watts, FM voice, line of sight, you're not going to make it at 4 or 5. Am I correct? Okay. All right. So that just doubled your battery life. You want to, you want to improve your battery life even more? Yes, we do, Clint. Use a headset or an earpiece. What's the first thing you'll do with the volume control if you stick an earpiece in your ear? You turn the volume down. What eats up batteries? Keying the mic to transmit and loud audio. So for your FT70, you don't need a second battery immediately. Marty, I'm not going to charge you anymore for that tip, Marty. That's included with the show this evening. Get perpendicular. Get perpendicular. This is a, a bumper sticker I had on my truck until I realized I needed to respect my marriage more. But when you, when you walk outside, yeah, yeah, we all, yeah, like we all haven't been there. Uh, when you go outside and uh, go in the front yard and key, your, key up your little mic, your emitted signal is about 90 degrees off the top third of your HT antenna, expecting you to hit a friend down the street or your nearby hilltop repeater. Well, most of our satellites are not land-based. Three. One. Most of our amateur satellites are not land-based, so you need to get that perpendicular. Thank you, Ed. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Ed. I just I heard I heard Ed slap his forehead three thousand miles away. Um, so you need to get that perpendicular relationship to match the orbit of the satellite. Now you're going to be opening up your squelch all the way. It is weak signal. It's two hundred fifty milliwatts from five hundred miles away. You will be opening up your squelch. But after it's about five or six degrees above the horizon and you start moving your antenna around, you're going you're to start hearing a little dip in the background noise. You've started to capture it. And about three or four minutes later, you're going to start hearing voices. When it's time of closest approach for good passes, it is as quiet background noise as your local repeater. It is phenomenal. Get perpendicular. You may have this magnetic sign for a $50 donation to AMSAT because I can't use it anymore. At the Santa Barbara Ham Fest, when you get to be 95 years of age, pictures like this just, just make you want to make, make me weepy. The young man on the left just got his amateur radio license the day before, the Friday before. His very first amateur radio contact was working a satellite with me there. How cool is that? It gets better. His father and his grandfather were there. I had three generations each working satellites for the very first time. So along with the picture of my wife in my left breast pocket in the casket, uh, I, I wouldn't mind taking this one with me too. Love you. Love you. If you're holding these handheld antennas, the elk log periodic, the arrow crossband commercial machine, uh, the arrows, they're both, they're each expensive propositions. Uh, this one has a diplexer and a handle, a little 15 watt diplexer that allows you to use one radio for both a two meter and a 440 elements. But the whole thing is, is kind of heavy and does indeed put stress on your, on your arm. So what I've done essentially is made the whole thing heavier, but I made a tray in the back here to accommodate my radio. And you all recognize that handle. Gentlemen, Stanley, Stanley indeed, a Stanley hacksaw handle. So the whole thing is heavier, but it, now it is very nicely counterbalanced. Uh, because 15 years ago, I put the arrow and you can see the defect in my wrist. And I just went down the street to Shorepoint and they, they, it took them five weeks, but they finally diagnosed it as arrow wrist syndrome. Mm -hmm. Hey, Marty gave me the microphone for three hours. Arrow wow. wrist syndrome. Don't be a, don't be a, a victim of arrow wrist syndrome. Here is my, my demo setup.
a little gaudy. The Tang bottle is not full. It's just my homage to our space race. The little cue card says we're listening for ISS Slow Scan TV. And that little white thing on, on right near me on the end of the boom, that's just one of those USB batteries to power my, uh, my iPhone that's in there. Uh, what's the guy doing up on the roof? That's probably my, I think it's my parole officer taking pictures to make sure there was evidence of where I was. And then Joe Walsh has been a fan and a supporter of amateur radio forever. And hold the whole thing together with a charity bracelet so you can turn that antenna, because I already had in the chat box somebody ask about circular polarization, and we'll talk about that in a few minutes. Where are these in the sky? They are not geosynchronous, so it's not one point all the time. Well, here is your AMSAT engineering team. We work 24-7 to derive satellite pass information for you. I love that picture. Again, that's two slide rule references and two references to the Cold War. My, okay, I love that picture. Anyway, it's easy to figure this out. With your slide rules, just put in the element set, inclination, R I of node, eccentricity, arc of the perigee, mean anomaly, mean motion, decay rate, epic revolution, and don't forget to check some. Don't forget to check some. And then map out that data on equatorial graph paper for every pass of every satellite you want to work. Got it? Ed's got it. Yep, ISS. 7.50 tomorrow morning. You got it. Everybody have that? We have middle school students doing this. Don't worry. Be happy. Don't worry. We have programs that do this for you. We're all friends here. We are all friends here. Anybody still using a Palm device? Anybody got a Trio or a, uh, a Trio 650? If you did... You'd get your battery from batteriesamerica.com. Batteriesamerica.com on your coast. Uh, that's what a segue that is. If you need uh, batteries for older radios, or if you need a double A case for your older HT, batteriesamerica.com. They're not, they're not a sponsor. They I've just been a consumer for more than twenty years, and they are good people. Okay, so nobody has a Palm device. Uh, anybody using a Android phone? Android. Cool. Okay, this is. Oh, wait a minute. What's wrong with this? What's wrong with that? What's wrong with that picture? AO51. Didn't the guy in the crazy shirt say this would be going in a different direction? Would AO51 ever go from east to west? No, it'd go south. No, it would not. This program is now known as AMSAT Droid Free. We were beta testing it. It now works. AMSAT Droid Free in the Google Play Store will give you accurate past prediction information. Anybody have a BlackBerry? <laughs> never mind, never mind. Linux people, Linux people, uh, Raspberry Pi people, G-Predict. G-Predict is phenomenal. It is free. You can tell it, it will track multiple satellites for you. It'll operate rotators for you later on. It can be ported to Windows. It can be ported to OS, uh, to Mac. And it runs on a Raspberry Pi Zero. I have mine set up uh, here. Raspberry, there's a... Raspberry Pi 3B Plus, which is just overpower for that program. Uh, Raspberry, excuse me, G Predict. It's in, uh, if you're running the normal, whatever normal means, if you're running the regular operating system for Raspberry Pi, it's one of the choosable data programs for you. G Predict, a phenomenal program. My go to, though, is for the Apple iPhone, GoSat Watch. GoSat Watch, all one word. It's not free, it's $10. I recommend programs that are current, recommend programs where you can get answers to questions. Uh, three years ago, the NASA changed the manner by which we acquired ISS pass data. This Canadian ham had this program rewritten and uploaded to the Apple Store, or to the App Store, within three weeks. That's the responsive author. $10, go sat watch. It is a, it'll give you a 10 minute warning for when something's gonna happen, uh, very configurable. You can set up different locations. Uh, it's just go sat watch. We'll do everything you wanna do in the amateur satellite uh, world. For Windows folks, there's Sat PC32. Sat PC32 is a commercial program. If you are a member of AMSAT, you get a little discount on its price, on its cost. Another Windows program that was commercial, not for modern, not from Windows 11, a few people Windows 10. If you're running a really old version of Windows, Nova for Windows is now freeware. Um, but yeah, not for, not for the more modern version of Windows. Any Mac folks? Any Apple folks in the, in the room? 
Huh, okay, well, I apologize for this, but here's this low-res Jiffy thing for Windows. Clint must have a Mac. Mac Doppler Pro, another wonderful program, will also uh, ro operate rotators for you. Uh, a commercial program, you get a discount on it if you are a member of AMSAT. It is that time of the evening over here where our homage to Alex Trebek, please, group, and Zoom people, open up your, uh, open up and let's have your final Jeopardy response, please. Somebody buzz in, please. Anybody? Templar. Pardon? Templar. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It must be in the form of a question. <laughs> you are absolutely right. You are absolutely smart. Al. I apologize. You are absolutely right. Johnny Kepler, Johannes Kepler. Uh, the story behind this is this is the first and last time I ever knew Final Jeopardy. But Kepler, uh, the data sets that we use to, for orbits of satellites are called Keplerian data after Johannes Kepler. And at midnight tonight, my time, three o'clock your time in the morning, we're gonna have a special little Zoom meeting. You're all welcome to attend. Well, we will decode that little white box there. Any takers? No, okay, that's cool. All right, just, just know it's a mathematical statement describing the orbit of a satellite. And I need to formally thank Sony Entertainment Network for, I have to play that entire 30 second clip uninterrupted. That's part of my license agreement. And if I don't, they have really arrogant attorneys. Thank you, Sony. Free information online. Th that's true, Marty. That's true. Free information online. Heavensabove.com, heavens-above.com, n2yo.com, n2yo.com, and amsat.org. Amsat.org will give you free live pass data. The first two give you graphical, beautiful pictures. Amsat site, uh, the pictures like that. There's a ground track plot of a, of a satellite pass. Amsat gives you that. Well, what you look for, what I would look for, there's a column there in the middle called maximum elevation. And I would look for, oh my God, there's an 85 one. See the 85 there? Let's look at that more closely. I hope I prepared this correct. Yes, I did. Look at that. 85 degree elevation. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Let's look at this even more closely. This is, my God. Okay. Please remember AMSAT's data is in UTC time. So at 1019 in the morning, minus four hours, is 619 AM. But that's okay. But that's okay because Ed says you all can come to the front yard. He'll be having some breakfast for you. 619 on May 12th. Because look at this. Look at this. From the northwest. Now, the ISS is not north to south, south to north. It's not a polar, uh, a polar pole, a polar satellite. But you acquire it at, per the site at 317 on the compass, and you lose it to the southeast. This is a northwest to southeast going right over Ed's front yard. You, this, could not, this could not be a more magnificent pass just to hear the ISS crossband repeater go over, but easily work it. That time in the morning is not going to be super crowded with fellow Eastern or East Coasters. This is going to be a phenomenal pass to work. So 1019 in the morning, UTC minus six, minus four, because you're four hours from UTC, 619 in the morning on Tomorrow, tomorrow morning, go do that. Go do that. So here's AMSAT's data. You just, you, now you know how to decode that data. Look for a high elevation pass, something above 20 or 25 degrees if you're working handheld. But man, that pass, you could not ask for a finer pass. Um, and I'll give you the frequencies in a second. They're, on, they're all over the place. Just for you to see this, uh, this is mesmerizing. And uh, again, when your wife, when your significant other is not around, this, you can play this all night long. This is cool. This is the orbit of the ISS. So you can tell it's, it's, it's going in a straight line, but it is not north to south, south to north like our, uh, like our satellites. The errors you can make in these satellite programs is putting in the wrong grid square, wrong location, or the wrong time of day. 
Uh, and some of the programs before you register them might revert to the author's home home site. So you just make sure that the time of day, recognizing daylight savings time, if you do, and your grid square are correct. N2IO made this little widget for me on my site where you can see where the ISS, SO50, and 91 are right now. And while you start out, go ahead and use two sources for satellite pass data. If one is really far off, then something is incorrect, and it might be a, it might be time or location. General procedures. We're almost through with part one of the of the uh, show this evening. Listen, open up your squelch. This sounds weird, and SO50 is the exception. But if you don't hear something, don't key your mic. That sounds weird, I know. But we know AO27. They might be trying to send commands to it to get it to work for us. AO91, same thing. Fellow AMSATers north of you and south of you are going to know, and if you follow AMSAT closely, you will know when it's safe to key the mic, but someone else will be on there for you. Uh, be courteous and quick, especially on the weekends, especially for events. A lot of hams are going after grid squares and contests and certificates and things. This might just be an exchange of grid squares and goodbye. But you're past tomorrow morning. You're going to be able to have some conversations with people. Uh, that... God, how many frequent flyer miles do we have? That is a phenomenal pass tomorrow morning for you. How far can you go with these things? This is by no means a record. And it was only a four degree elevation pass for me in California. But here's 2,000 miles from here to Georgia. Um, we each were using FT60s. I apologize. We were cheating. We we're using a full four watts. Got to be honest with you. But again, only four degree elevation for me, 2,000 miles. Can I, I cannot duplicate that every night, and nor is that a record by any means. But that's just, look at the upper right, the picture sh shows the ground track, and I, I shouldn't have been, you know, that clicker software said I shouldn't be working it. I should only be working 500 miles. So uh, if it's line of sight above five or 10 degrees above the horizon, you're going to start hearing it and start working it. Is that your meeting room? No. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Who knows what the grid? Who knows what the grid square is? The parking lot of the meeting room. Yeah. Anybody know? Yeah. I did know it. Yeah. Al eighty six. That is correct. Do you know the uh the? Do you happen to know the two two letter suffix? Next W. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. You are good. You are good. And as you just heard, especially you, you new members, we're using the international phonetics for this. This is not uh, Eddie Lizard. It is Echo Lima 86. And you don't need to know the suffix. But uh, the astronauts are expecting international phonetics. Your fellow hams should be expecting international phonetics. So Echo Lima 86 is the uh, grid square. And it's a handsome. Uh, I, don't, I don't see your. Where's your tower and your antennas? Are they all up in the hill? That's not the location. That's location of that, the that's, reader. Oh, but but that's it is your meeting room. It's on the field day side. The field day side. Okay. Okay. Field okay. That's cool. Ninety-seven AA. Very good. They are good. They are good. They are good. We already talked about that. Here's what I take with me to demos. I've got the Kenwood THD seventy-two, but. When that was selling, you could buy two FT60s and an Arrow antenna, had to ha have money left over for a Happy Meal. So uh, FT60 with split frequencies in it. Working true full duplex is preferred, but it's not absolutely mandatory. Are there in the room, are there any AMSAT members? I need to be careful here. Okay, we're all mm -hmm. friends here. Um, working true full duplex is preferred. That's six times I've said that. But if you treat it just like your local repeater, you don't intentionally step on someone. You wait for a break in the action, then key your mic and identify yourself. Well, you're past tomorrow morning with the ISS. You should be able to get in. Um, and you have as much capability of getting in with two or four or five watts as the guy in Texas with his 100 watts, cowboy hat, brown liquor, foot switch. It's all timing. These are one channel in. There's one cha one station is working at a time. So you have this. It's all timing. Uh, if you're in there first, you're going, you're going to get through. Uh, I will take the arrow with me or a tape measure beam and something to protect my, uh, my SMA connector. For SO50, and this is, wait a minute, stand by a second. Hey, Siri, eliminate uh, 202 and 208. 202, 208. Okay, okay thank you. I found this 
this on the web for Thank Eliminate 200 2208. Thank you. Check it out. I will. Here's how I program a radio for SO50. On two meters, transmit. Are we accommodating for Doppler on two meters? No, we're no. not. It stays the same. Receive. Thank you. For receiving, though, channel 206 is the middle frequency, 436.795. It's a little off frequency. It's like 797, but it's rocket science, but it ain't rocket science. A lot of satellites require a tone on the uplink, a tone on the uplink. Keep your receive open. Keep your receive open. And this works, this demands a 67.0 tone to access. What is that arrow? Do you see an arrow on your screen? Yeah. What's that 70? Anybody know what that 74.4 is there for? Is that a typo? Okay, folks. Here we go. So let's say you've worked SO50 a few times, everything is wonderful, but it's, it's insomnia time, you walk into your shack, you look at your PC, your satellite pass prediction program, SO50 is going over the house in five minutes. You put the parka on, you walk out in the backyard, you know it's there because you've worked it before, you key your mic, nothing comes back. Turn your radio to 74.4, shoot it 74.4 for five seconds, and turn on its 10 minute timer you become the control operator of a satellite then go back to 67.0 and where is that cool or what you think i wasn't scared crudless the first time i did that I thought, oh my god it's going to crash in my koi pond the the amsat handcuffs are going to be tight someone to the north of you or south of you might not know how to turn it on you know how to turn so50 on if you know it's there and you can't access it is anybody kind of excited about that? Okay, all right. For AO91, the receive frequency is two meters. We're not accommodating for Doppler on two meters, but the transmit frequency is going to be different, and you have to accommodate for Doppler on transmit. And AO91, please, only in daylight hours. The battery situation is indeed that dire. Let's put this all together. We're almost through with part one. You know when it's going to be there. You know where it is. You've got your grid square. You've got your radio programmed. Wait for a break in the action, then announce yourself. Please use your own call sign. Kilo 6 Lima Charlie Sierra, Echo Lima 86. And then some AMSAT folks don't like me doing this, but if I say, if you say handheld or demo, it's going to let some of the diehards know here's somebody newer or with low power if you say handheld they know you're low power and probably newer to the hobby they're going to let you in if you say demo hams are going to know uh, hey they're he's trying to show this he or she's trying to show this off to their club uh, i did a poll yesterday uh, last week 94.7 percent 94.7 percent of amateur radio satellite operators are just fine people we have all made mistakes we have all actually stepped on someone else uh, but there's a lot of respect very little intentional interference so yeah if you say handheld or demo it's not gonna hurt it's a third of a second of airtime no one's going to get upset with you and then when you start working the satellites it is your and my responsibility as ham radio operators to access this page and report what we hear and report what we don't hear this is the amsat live oscar satellite status page blue is good blue is good this lets you know what's up and running so let's look at this a little bit more closely. Uh, arrow number one is AO27. Not working. Not working. What, what is, is that SO, what is, uh, is that AO, what's the second arrow, number two? I can't see it. AO91. Thank you very much. AO91, mostly blue. Uh, so whatever your honest report is, if you think it's supposed to be there during daylight and you don't hear it, don't be afraid to be contrary. You know, if, if the guy in the weird shirt says it's working, but you don't see it work, go ahead and report that. Uh, error, uh, there's ISS data, number three, arrow number three. That's your packet station coming from the Russian service module. Look at that blue. Look at that blue. It's on all the time. ISS FM. Arrow number four, that's our crossband repeater on the American Columbus module on almost all the time. Two little red ones in there. Someone just didn't hear it. Don't be afraid to be honest with this. No one's going to say, oh, you're wrong. PO101, arrow number five there, is also a crossband FM repeater, but it's not on 24-7 for you like the other ones. You have to go to their Twitter feed and see what blocks of time it's on. So 
because you that because there's that added part of the equation for you as you start out. I just don't really push PL one zero one. But look look down there, arrow number six, SO fifty. SO fifty, just pumping out that two hundred and fifty milliwatts with that quarter wave antenna twenty four seven for you. When you see something like this on the chart, that's the ISS equipment off. ISS equipment, the ham gear will be turned off during spacewalks or when a mission is heading towards it or leaving it. So these are all, and these, all these spacewalks and missions are all subject to change. There is an ARISS status page, but all those times are subject to change. Just know if it's not there, well, look at the, look at the news, look at spacetrack.com and see maybe there's a, a spacewalk occurring or, uh, or a mission heading towards or from the ISS. There's the, the most recent Daiwata PO101 data, uh, just showing you that it's only on for a few hours at a time. That's, a, that's from their Twitter feed. Submitting a report on that page is easy. There's a cross, there's a drop down list of repeaters. You click whether the uplink and downlink were active. If it's only packet you heard, just click downlink only. It reverts to the last 15 minute segment of time and you put your call. No worries What's that? Who is that? QRZ, who is KM4LKC? Uh, cool. Oh, well, cool. Someone was working uh, the ISS a couple days ago. And uh, put your grid square in, submit the data. Uh, that donate button at the bottom there that goes directly to AMSAT, 100% goes to AMSAT. Use that button liberally. Did you know just hearing the ISS, either a packet burst or hearing tomorrow morning the voices on the crossband repeater? qualify you for that gorgeous QSL card, you will apply for it just as a shortwave listener for that circumstance. But when you work packet or you work FM voice or work FM simplex with an astronaut, you can apply for another one for those modes of operation. Another exciting project from the, usually from the Russian module are slow scan TV projects, usually in format PD120, it's a two minute transmission. This can be a simple, to decode and listen to as holding up your smartphone with a $3 app to your handheld radio with stock duck. No Windows drivers, no interconnecting cables. Now, if you notice on the guy's in the middle, the guy's white shirt, there's two little white blips there. If you do do this acoustically like that, just leave your dog in the house because that's my dog parking <laughs> that, caused, that caused that blip. Uh, so that, that was cool, that was cool. But it can be as simple as your smartphone hold up to your, held up to your two-meter receiver uh, HT and decode images like this. Russians will do this about five times a year. Sometimes they'll be Russian-centric. It'll only be happening over Russia. But you know darn well, I'll be monitoring just in case they didn't flip the switch off. And there'll be two or three projects for us uh, worldwide. Oh, uh, wait a minute. I thought I turned that off. Wait a second. Clint, talk more about the... I Okay, stand by a second. Yes, I will right now. All right, cool. The ISS, there is our 2 meter 440 antenna on the Columbus module. That's not me. But that's our ARISS antenna. On the Russian service module, there's the three ARIS antennas, the amateur antennas on the Russian module. There is the status of ISS gear um, as of a couple days ago, but just telling you that in the Columbus module, the Kenwood is programmed for crossband repeat, and in the service module is programmed for packet. And again, all those times, those are scheduled EVAs and projects, but those are all subject to change. Here's the ISS frequency chart. Don't need to write this down. It's all on my website. That is that uplink for the crossband repeater is not wrong. It is a weird little frequency, 145.99, 145.99. Uplink, we're not accommodating for Doppler. This is a wonderful Doppler experiment tomorrow morning. If, you just, if you're just listening, you're going to acquire it slightly above. So flip over to VFO to 437.810, start hearing it, and you'll start hearing it de deteriorate. You'll turn to 805, it'll be strong as a son of a gun, it'll start deteriorating. Right when it's over, uh, over Ed's house, it'll be right on 437.800, and then as you lose it, it'll be slightly below. So just go out there and listen for it. Uh, and if you have a little, little, little gain antenna to work with tomorrow, try it. Try the uplink 145.99. Packet is usually on 145.825. FM slow scan TV projects are usually 145.800. 
very rarely do the astronauts use those two FM uh, two meter pairs, that 145, 800 downlink, and then a region one, 145.200, the underlined ones. But you know what? Program those both in your handhelds. You would really be irritated if, if you, you found out that uh, that Marty had been talking to an astronaut, but they were on the wrong region uplink. But you now know that you have both those. If you hear something happening on that frequency, uh, a male or female voice coming down, uh, make sure you have both those uplinks ready and available. That is the end of part one. Uh, part two will start and we'll take a coffee break here. Uh, if you go to my website, no, this is not as clean and crisp and clear as the, uh, the Charlotte website. But if you scroll to the bottom, right in the middle there, it says satellite show citations. Everything we talked about this evening is there for you in chronological order. Uh, all the programs we talked about, uh, Astro Pi, uh, say the Tibet Foundation, and uh, all sorts of stuff is on that site. All right. Any Zoomers or anyone in the room have any questions I could I could try to answer for you? I could not have been not all. In While we're waiting for those flood of questions to come in, in the room that I can see, who has already worked a satellite in your, in your amateur career? Anyone? Awesome. Who hasn't worked it, but hey, might just get up at 6.15 tomorrow morning just to hear the ISS go over. It's something you didn't think you could do before, but you might do it tomorrow morning. Anybody? Uh -huh. Well, you, you got it. Ed says he's offered the front yard, so you got somebody's got to show up. Anyway, it's just something. Uh, it still thrills me. I'm still finding audience that enjoy this, and and knowing with that tape measure, that that tape measure beam. If you do make yourself a tape measure beam, I'm sure you already know. Do something to protect those ends. Those ends are sharp, no matter how much you curve them. Um, I'm in California, so my attorney said, you know, either give every attendee of your of your parties, uh, give them goggles, or what I found were little foam golf balls that I put on the end of my elements so no one gets gets cut with those. Also, Florida, if you travel with a tape measure beam in your luggage, give yourself three hours at the airport. It's a guaranteed cavity search. Once TSA sees those, they just go nuts. They just go nuts. They don't understand what they are.